Hello, this video is going to be on uh, a hypothesis test for the difference in two means, and we are assuming the groups are independent, there's no pairing. So this is a continuation of the same problem we did a confidence interval for, so same scenario, same numbers, and again, same trait, so again, time was our trait, it's a numerical trait, days, population, yeah. and we're going to test the hypothesis that Route 2 is longer than Route 1 using a 5% significance level. So, uh, let's go ahead and just translate this. We're assuming here that if they had said every word that test the hypothesis that the time, the average time that it takes to get to work using Route 2 is longer than the average time that it takes to, to go using Route 1. In that case, what we're saying is that the... Um, mu2 is the average time uh, go, to go to work using route 2. Right? So that's the route 2 is longer, so therefore takes more time than route 1, which would be mu1, which is the average time using route 1. Okay. So essentially what that means is your alternative will be set up mu2 is greater than mu1, just translating directly from the sentence here that's given to us. All right, so then let's go ahead and set up our hypothesis, hypotheses. So we would say for the null, again, when you're dealing with uh, two populations, you always assume that the two are the same or that their difference is zero, right? So you could also say mu2 minus mu1 is 0. For the alternative, we just went ahead and set up mu2 is greater than mu1. That's what we got right here. And then for the alternative, we could, using algebra, just subtract mu1 from both sides and get that the difference between the two is, sorry, greater than 0. Okay. Continuing that. All right. So those are our hypotheses. And then the conditions have already been done in part one. So you can check that. I'll just put this up here when we did our box plots and checked for all the, the three conditions here. We got everything was fine. but And you can pause the video and just see if you get the same thing. Or you could watch part one. Okay. And then... We went ahead and did an info box, just organizing our information. Right? This you would get from putting the values in list 1 and list 2. So let me put up these values again so you don't have to rewind. If you haven't put those values in, I would suggest you go ahead and get your TI calculator or whatever. Go ahead and put these in list 1 and these in list 2. And then just double check that indeed you'll get sample means this way and the standard deviation of the sample and the sample sizes. Here that are the same. So then when you do your standard error, I got 1.43. Okay. And remember, in part one, I also mentioned that technically the degrees of freedom, we're supposed to use this formula, but I am simplifying it. Degrees of freedom, I'm being conservative. I'm taking the degrees of freedom of the smaller sample size. So between 18 and 23, that would be 18. So our degrees of freedom would be 17. Okay. So now that we're kind of caught up, let's take a look at our master overview. If we were following our master overview to help us out, we would say the trait is numerical. So I'd be on this side of the page. And then we're looking at a hypothesis test. So I'm at the bottom here. And it's two, uh, two populations, so two means. So I'd follow this right here. So we've already got our hypotheses set up. Uh, we showed conditions. Now we're at the point of showing the distribution of the difference in the sample means. So we would make this shape, the center would be 0, and then we'd use our standard error here, which was 1.43, to create the actual distribution going out three standard errors in both directions. And then we would test this, right, we would test it, value minus mean over standard error. So our value is the actual difference in the sample means that we got, how far is that difference from 0. And again, I'm being theoretically consistent because 0 is the mean, it's the center. It doesn't really have any 
use in terms of arithmetic. If you subtract zero from anything, it doesn't change the value. But it's just theoretically consistent. And then divided by the standard error. Once you get your t-score, uh, run it through TCDF, get your p-value. And then once you have your p-value, compare it to your significance level and decide whether you reject or not reject the null. And then write your sentence in terms of the alternative. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so now we're at the, what I call the model, which is the distribution of expected sample differences, right? Remember that our standard error was 1.43, which I'll just round to 1.4, okay? Remember that came from here, standard error, okay. And now let's go ahead and create this. So we have 0, uh, 1.4, 2.8, 4.2, and then going this way, negative 1.4, negative 2.8, and negative 4.2. And again, just to remind you what this distribution is really saying, is it's saying that if indeed it's true, that our, our null is true, right, that there's no difference on average, there's no average difference in the time that it takes to go route 1 or route 2, if that is true, then we'll still see sample differences of up to 1.4 minutes either way, how often? 68% of the time, because that's about one standard error in both directions. And then 95% of the time, we'll see about a difference, an average difference in the sample means of about 2.8 minutes either way. And now when I say either way, the way we've set it up, I've set it up mu2 first and then mu1. So when I'm here on the positive side, it would mean sometimes it uh, mu2, uh, Route 2 takes longer, and then other times Route 1 takes longer. And again, you'd have those differences because of sampling variability. Sometimes one sample would be higher, sometimes the other one would be higher, even though on average there's no difference. Okay. So now we've got our model. We're going to test this with a, an actual difference in sample means. So we're going to test it with, now remember, Stay consistent with your order. I did two mu two and then mu one, so I need to subtract y two minus y bar two minus y bar one. So now we go to our info box. That would be thirty nine point oh nine minus thirty six point seven two. So thirty nine oh nine point oh nine minus thirty six point seven two is two point three seven, and you can see that uh, sample difference would be right around here somewhere, right? Okay. And because I stayed consistent in my order of subtraction, I can allow this alternative hypothesis to let me know which direction to shade. It's greater than, so I shade greater than. Okay. Now I go ahead and set up the t-score. How far is this sample difference, y bar 2 minus y bar 1, from the mean 0? So how far is this sample difference from the mean standardized? So I'd have 2.37 minus 0 over 1.43, and I get 1.6573 standard errors away. That looks about right. It's, here's one standard error, here's two. It's about right. So now run it through TCDF. 1.6573 to 100. And remember, this is our degrees of freedom of the smaller sample size. I'm kind of simplifying this here. So now I get 0.058, which we could say is about 6%. That's our p-value. All right. So now we're ready to write our conclusion. The p-value is greater than the significance level because 6% is greater than 5%. Okay. So I do not reject the null. And therefore, there is not enough evidence that, and let's go back to our hypotheses here. So remember, if I'm not rejecting the null, I'm saying this is possible, that the null is possible. So if the null is possible, then the alternative is not likely. That's why I'm saying there's not enough evidence that the alternative is true. And what does the alternative say? That the average time it takes to drive using Route 2 is longer or greater than the average time that it takes to go Route 1.
So really, it shouldn't matter which route I take. 